Surely a sign of artistic greatness is the capacity to endure, for your work to go on speaking to future generations long after you've gone. So cue a man whose luminous portrayals have been translated the world over, someone who posthumously is still winning prizes, whose books have acquired classic status. Welcome to Who is Romania and one of the country's finest writers, Mihail Sebastian, a man who understood emotion. If you believe good writing demands pain, I can assure you Sebastian experienced plenty of it. Born Josef Hechter in 1907 on the banks of the River Danube in Braila, he grew up a Jewish boy in Romania, a country that had long resisted emancipating its Jews in an era that would see anti-Semitism take on new, brutal, fatal forms. I'm ashamed to be sad. Sebastian rarely felt sorry for himself. Self-pity wasn't his bag. A writer, an observer, a brave new talent, he soon got spotted. Nai Inescu was the man of the moment between the wars in Romania, an academic, a philosopher, and an influential far-right thinker. Like so many of his contemporaries, Ionescu was an anti-Semite, but initially he made an exception for Sebastian. The young writer walked a narrow path, shunned by his fellow Jews for his compromising associations, and never fully accepted by this new, heady, academic set. It's deeply ironic, of course, that the man who captures best so much of Romania's beauty, its ironic humour and lyrical past, wasn't accepted by his homeland. The 30s, that fraught devil's decade with its swirling symbols and tension, brought out the best in Sebastian and the worst in the world around him. Until 1934, he'd focused on becoming a popular playwright, and then bang, he dared to write about being a Jew in 1920s Romania. The Domi de An, for 2,000 years, has since been translated worldwide. It's considered a classic, and no wonder. Sebastian was stunned by the reaction for 2,000 years elicited. All sides were incensed. His friend, Nai Ionescu, lit the touch paper with an anti-Semitic foreword. In it, he wrote that Mihail Sebastian was not a Romanian. He was Josef Hector, a Jew. The book's startling reasonableness, its lack of accusation and clarity of thought, make the anti-Semitic commentary unleashed all the more shocking. Sebastian writes, choirs, marching in cadence and vague symbols, this psychological drunkenness are the raw material of any dictatorship. Whether they are dishonourable or not, it matters little. They are effective and that is enough. There is only one enemy that can stand against them, the critical spirit. The paragraph ends with a pointed barb, a yabu sucks at Romania's fascist Iron Guard movement. The critical spirit has never had a uniform. He is a civilian. What's extraordinary is the way Sebastian was able to negotiate the schizophrenic 1930s. On the one hand, he suffered terrible abuse. His friends abandoned him and he was increasingly alone. But we also know from his journal that he continued to enjoy aspects of the louche Bucharest lifestyle. He loved and laughed, drank coffee and cognac, and published a rich stream of work, most of it devoid of any sort of Jewish commentary. The town with acacia trees, or Ashel Kusalkum, is a beautiful coming-of-age novel which captures the contradictions of adolescence. How does a man write like that about a young girl? No wonder the translated version has just won the English Pen Award. Above all, Sebastian's life is a testimony to the self-defeating nature of racism. His plays were brilliant, of-the-moment set pieces. In wartime Bucharest, Steo Afaranume, star without a name, opened to a full house and rave reviews. Yet no one could know that the playwright was Jewish Sebastian. By then he was a poor man, unable to earn decent money. He fell in love with actress Leni Kaller and wrote in his journal, She's so beautiful and I am so badly dressed, so clumsy. Sebastian almost survived Romania's war, but his end was pitifully premature. In May 1945, it was almost possible to dream of a new dawn. Romania's pro-German general, Ion Antonescu, had been toppled the year before. 
Germany had just surrendered and Sebastian was on his way to give a lecture at the University of Bucharest when a truck killed him stone dead, aged just 37. Post-war, most of Romania's Jews left for Israel or America, including Sebastian's brother, who took his journals with him. It was decades later in the 1990s before they were finally published, both in the new fledgling democracy that is modern Romania and internationally to great acclaim. And how Sebastian's work stands the test of time. Who am I talking about right now? Not one of the intellectuals caught up in the messaging of the far right. No, I'm talking about a Jewish lad born on the banks of the river Danube. In our current torrid times, with all its protest and division, if ever a man needs a statue, it's Mihail Sebastian.